Hey, welcome. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thanks for waiting. And uh, today's going to be a pretty cool live stream, I think, because it's a subject that a lot of people neglect or don't study as much as they should, which is drawing bodies, caricature bodies specifically. Now, the secret to drawing good caricature bodies, I think personally, is drawing good figure drawings, just realistic style. I mean, it's fairly straightforward. It's, um, uh, when you study traditional figure drawing, you learn the importance of gesture, mannequinization, which is idealizing of the forms, simplification, mapping out shadow patterns, and you get that from drawing from the live model. And uh, I've done that for years, and if you haven't ever done it, I, I do suggest you definitely try it, because the better you are at that, the better you're going to apply those skills, I think, to caricature. So, um, during the uh, intro, you probably saw some of my uh, caricature practice sketches, I'm sorry, my figure drawing practice sketches that I've done over the years. Some of them were live, uh, you know, sorry, some of them were quick sketches, some were like 20 minute drawings, some were a little longer than that. And uh, I'll be going, over the, be going over some of them more in detail, I'll be showing you them here in a minute. Uh, let's see who all is in the chat today. Hey, Shiny, thanks for joining. Michael, hi. Max, hi. Hey Patrick, welcome. Red, Keys, hello from Holland. All right, good to see you guys here. Uh, let me know what you think about this time period. Uh, I had to move it back just because I had an obligation earlier today, had an online thing I had to attend. Um, but if you like this time better, let me know. Uh, I've always been doing it at noon our time just because it just that's just what I settled on. But um, uh, I know just certain people around the world in different time zones might have a harder time watching it, but other people will have a better time, so. But let me know in the votes. Also, I wanted to mention, um, you may have noticed uh, an ad playing at the beginning of my stream and some other streams if you've watched them in playback. So I was able recently to monetize my channel and turn ads on, uh, which is pretty cool because I've actually invested quite a lot in getting this set up to do live streaming in the springtime. And uh, it'd be nice to pay for that eventually somehow. <laughs> um, so I've actually also turned on uh, Super Chat and stickers. So in the live chat, if you want to send me a sticker that I, I'm not sure exactly how it works because this is kind of new to me. I've seen other streamers do it, but I believe a sticker will appear on screen and it'll be from you and it'll be like, hey, I'll give you a shout out. Um, also, if you want to do a highlighted comment and you can choose your level of donation, I guess, to the channel. Uh, and then if any comments are highlighted, we'll definitely take a look at, you know, addressing those live in real time. We don't always get to all the comments, so but if you do a highlighted comment, we'll notice it. And uh, anyway, that will also help me just provide, you know, get me more uh, ability to do better cameras and stuff in the future, like for doing oil painting and stuff. Right now I just have two webcams. One's really good and one's really bad. I'd like to get like a second good one that I can like, aim at my palette. So it'll help me towards that end too for the more uh, money I can make on the channel. Although it's not the reason I'm doing this. I'm not doing this to make money. It just would be nice to, you know, pay for the stuff I've spent to enable to do it. I really just want to reach out to people and share my art, share my thoughts, and connect with people. It's really the main reason I'm doing it. Anyway, with that said, uh, everyone, welcome Debbie. She's here helping me. You can probably see her in the background here. Uh, she's going to watch for the comments, too, and help me out. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, main screen here. All right, so, all right, let's see, we've got, hopefully that chat will show up here. The chat's supposed to populate the, uh, this window here, but I don't see it just yet. Hmm. Well, if it doesn't, well, we've still got the chat on the side. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and get to business here. Uh, so these are some of my, uh, these are figure quick sketches from the live model that I did many years ago. And they're all probably, I'd say these are probably two minute sketches, maybe three minute sketches, where the model will just do a variety of dynamic poses. And the quick sketch teaches you probably more than anything else about figure drawing than any other type or length of sketch. The quick sketch, they're hard to do, um, but what you, what, what you wanna do is you wanna focus. You wanna focus on gesture or the movement of the pose. That is king, that is key to figure drawing is the gesture. And that's basically the sweep of the pose from the head, from the spine down to the foot. You want to get that initial motion gesture in there. And we're going to be doing some of these, of course, live later on. I just wanted to show some examples of traditional figure drawings done uh, in that method with just two or three minutes available. And when you have that short amount of time, that's when you 
can really just focus on the most important aspects, which is the movement of the pose. When you have a little more time, like five minutes, 10 minutes, or 20 minutes, you could start to do uh, uh, more uh, anatomical things, uh, more shadow mapping, and I have some examples of those as well. Uh, these are actually, this is probably like a five minute quick sketch actually, where I'm just able to do a little bit more uh, shadow wise, a little bit with the edges, uh, this was a fun one. This was actually probably like an hour, maybe even a two-hour study. Um, but I actually did a caricature live study of this muscular guy that looks sort of like Tarzan. And I had a real good time doing this one. I, I almost never do live caricature body drawing. Uh, but I should. You know, it's 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 good to do, I think. Uh, and he was a good subject for that, muscular-wise. So I was able to refer to the actual real muscles and give it a lot of uh, realistic anatomy. and uh, But just stretch out the proportions. And it turned out pretty funny, I think. Uh, here's another one. This is, I don't know, again, probably, this is probably a 20 minute uh, pose. 20 minutes are great uh, for doing uh, figures because you can do the gesture, you can start to get some of the anatomy and proportions and some of the uh, shadows in, and then you don't fuss over it, you don't work it to death, you don't worry about details. And it's, it's the, I think the first 20 minutes is, is probably the most important part in doing realistic finished figure drawings. Everything after that is just details. But the most important work is done in the first 20 minutes. Here's another one, another 20 minute pose. And these are just with charcoal on newsprint. Here's some cool dynamic poses. These are probably five minute warm up sketches, I think. I can usually tell because I usually fill up a page uh, for each model session, and the session's usually 20 minutes. And if there's four poses, that means we spend about five minutes on each pose. And if there's just one per page, it's usually like a 20 minute pose like this. I censored things a little bit for YouTube, you know, I blurred out some of the uh, adult bits, so I wouldn't get banned or anything. <laughs> uh, this one was a uh, another 20 minute figure study where I just had enough time to start thinking about the anatomy of a, just focused on the anatomy of the leg, and then I ran out of time. So set goals for yourself when you have limited time, figure out what you can do in that amount of time and how to get the most out of it. Here's another one that turned out all right. Pretty simple. Oh, and um... Beyond just figure drawing, you're going to actually, when you're doing caricature work, I'm sorry, when you're doing, yeah, when you're doing illustration work, you're almost always going to be drawing people with clothes on. So it's good if you can get into a figure drawing class where they actually have the models wearing clothing because you can see the folds, how the clothing hangs, and uh, that's exceedingly important when doing illustration or fine art to understand how cl clothing works because you almost will never be drawing nude people for your, uh, uh, for your assignments and for your work. Uh, folds and drapery, that's a whole other subject, and I'm not really going to get into that today, uh, even though I will be drawing some clothing on people, but we're going to mostly focus on gesture and short sketches. All right, it looks like the chat box isn't quite working, so I'm just going to um, turn off that background color there. Um, any, any interesting questions now, Debbie? No questions yet. Bring them on. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and open up some photo reference. I'm going to be drawing some caricature bodies uh, today, and let's just open all of them. I doubt I'm going to get to all of these, but uh, you never know. So what I what I like to look for when I'm looking for photo reference uh, of you know of these here just to practice, I like a good dynamic pose and interesting body proportions. So I tried to find people that had, you know, you know, I love group shots that show diversity in body types because that's always really fun to draw. And then really cool action poses that have a lot of motion in them or are always really good practice to draw. Because when you're doing an illustration, you're always going to be drawing the subject in some sort of action because their body, their hands, their body language has to be telling a story. Are they running away from something? Are they scared? Are they fighting and mean? Are they happy and joyful? All that comes through not only with the face, but also with the position of the body and what the hands and the rest of the body are doing. So, <clears throat> yeah, you need to definitely be able to capture the motion of a pose. So a couple questions came in after that request. Cool. Um, let me see. Praveen is asking, will you ever do a live stream on drawing from imagination? Um, what do you think? Yeah, I, that's that's a good suggestion. Write that one down. Um, right. Because you do often have to do that 
in your illustration work. Uh, oftentimes you will be under a time crunch or you won't have a really great photo reference to work from or you don't want to take photo reference for every single figure in the composition and you may just have to invent a few. But that is definitely a skill to practice figure invention and it is based on knowing good human proportions and having anatomical knowledge, understanding how clothing and folds work because all that stuff is if it's invented, it's really tough to do. Um, I almost always try to shoot my photo reference if I'm going for a high degree of realism. Uh, but when you don't, uh, it's, yeah, it, it, uh, it can be problematic if you're not studied up on that and have a lot of practice with it. And another question from Red Jones. Is he a relative? Nope. <laughs> okay. Do the quick sketches here, I'm guessing the ones you just showed, serve the same purpose as the thumbnail sketches? that you do for caricature faces? Yeah, exactly. The uh, the gesture uh, sketch, the quick figure quick sketch is just like the thumbnail concept sketch for caricature. So that's a good question. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and demo right now, Debbie, before taking any more questions, um, just on, to get started on this one. What I like to do generally is start with the head shape and the head size, and it's I'm not locking myself into it necessarily. It doesn't mean I'm going to stick with these proportions. This is just to get me started. And this is going to be caricatured, but um, I'm not, definitely set on this head size for sure. Uh, but what I, want to see, what I want to see here, what I want to look for is basically the center of the torso and then how it lines up with the weight-bearing foot. Usually one foot or one leg will be the weight-bearing foot and that's the one where I draw the motion from top to bottom. And This one's a little hard. She, it looks like she has her weight evenly spaced on both legs probably because it's a martial arts pose I guess and that's good balance as you want to have your weight equally distributed. But if I had to choose one, gun to my head, I would say probably the, the, uh, uh, the leg on the right. It's usually the one that's more underneath the actual head. And if I want to push it, I can, you know, so I'll make, say, the curvature of the spine here or the torso. And then down to the leg. And keep it more or less underneath the head. And then the, uh, the other leg will come out just a little bit more than that one. So it'll look like the weight is shifted to this leg on the right. And that's it. That's the gesture. That's the motion of the pose. That's kind of what's happening in a very rudimentary way. Um, it's not finished yet, of course, but what I, what I want to do is within this like first three minutes, figure that out, figure out the rest. So I usually come up with the line for the shoulders, basically the angle of the shoulders. Is, is the left one higher than the right? Yeah, just a little bit. And then maybe some kind of triangular form or a sort of bean shape for the uh, torso for where the rib cage is. And the rib cage is turned slightly away from us here. and then connect it down here with the legs. And I try to draw in just long sweeping lines as much as possible. I try not to do short jagged lines. And then I look for shapes that overlap other shapes. I look for parallel shapes. I look for shapes that are uh, uh, you know, horizontal or perfectly vertical. This uh, arm here is just slightly off vertical. It's a little bit angled, so I want to make sure I do that. Uh, it's actually up a little bit higher. It's If I want to line it up exactly as it is <clears throat> in the photo, this arm, this hand needs to be rest a little bit higher if I'm going for more accuracy. Because of the angle of the sword, that all has to match. And the sword is more or less uh, perfectly horizontal. So the hand's going to be about here. That means the forearm is going to be about like so. And then the other arms behind that, like so. So everything's just a gesture right now. It's not. I'm not worrying about anatomy. I'm not even really too much worried about proportions. I can fix that later. I just want to get the motion of the pose, the angles, the dynamic quality of the pose. Um, now I can maybe redo the head just a little bit based on you know a rough caricature idea of what I want. She has sort of a. To me, she has like a praying mantis shaped head because her eyes are really far apart. So, but this isn't about caricaturing the faces, though. that's just sort of what I would do there. And that's it, that's the gesture, the motion of the pose. And what I might do after this is just dim this layer down and trace on top of it a slightly more refined, rough sketch on top of it. So it works a lot like the caricature thumbnails. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. And if there's any questions, let me know. Okay, let's save this group one for a little later, and let's do let's do a man. We just did a woman. 
this guy, the uh, previous pope. Can't remember what his name was. Uh, so I'm going to exaggerate his pose a little bit too. Uh, it's it's not exactly a super dynamic pose, but what I try to do is try to find the motion in it and heighten it. And uh, I, of course, also want to caricature his physical type. He's a little bit older, maybe a little hunched over. You don't really see a neck. So maybe I'll sink the head down a little bit lower onto his shoulders. These are just impressions I get as I look at it. So there we go. And he's more or less facing right at us with slightly turned to the right. So I want to keep that in mind as I do that. And he's completely obscured by his robes by his vestments, uh, but what I want to do is imagine the body that's beneath it. It sounds kind of weird, I'm trying to imagine what the Pope looks like underneath his robes, but, you know, you're an artist, so I'm an artist, so I, <laughs> that's acceptable. And trying to have fun with the body proportions. I don't really know if he's short or tall, honestly, but I'm just thinking maybe I'll make him sort of like, oh, what's coming to mind? That character from Despicable Me, the uh, Guru, is that his name? So yeah, not a lot of dynamic quality to this, but the leg has some motion to it. Um, the shoulders are squared off pretty much, but I do kind of think it's a funny choice here to sink his head down into his uh, shoulders a bit. And I'm just trying to imagine his anatomy somewhat beneath here, so I'm imagining his rib cage. Uh, where his, the line of his chest is, down to the pelvis. I just refine it a little bit because it was just, it was a little too vague. And then just so it kind of looks more popey, I'm going to just throw some of these, uh, you know, the clothing on in a real simplistic way. So the belt will be about here. And the skirt has a bit of motion in it. You can flare it out to the left here and take advantage of the motion of that to make the sketch a little more interesting. And this long scarf. Or the sash, I guess it is, hanging off of his belt. So have a question. Sure. Herman wants to know if you have any other resources for good models for gesture. Yeah, if you guys want to practice your figure gesture drawing online, that's a good question. Um, there, I mean, there's so many artists reference websites now where they hire models and you can have access to them. Some even have them like timed poses where you can just get onto the page. They usually have to pay a membership or they have a Patreon. Uh, where you can subscribe to it and have access to these timed photos. Uh, I think Crokey Cafe is a real popular one. Uh, it's spelled C-R-O-Q-U-I-S, Cafe. It's just French. It means drawing in French. And um, uh, they have a lot, a lot of model photos. And there might be some other ones, too. So, um, yeah, it's good to find websites that service artists in particular for figure drawing. You don't want to just find random. I mean, you can find random figure drawings like this, but you'll get more out of it. You'll get poses that artists benefit more from if they have those ideas in mind when they take the photos of the models rather than just random photos online, which don't really, you know, just are, you don't want necessarily candids all the time to practice from. Okay, let's try, we got uh, Salma here. So there's some great motion in this pose here. There is, uh, you know, she's looking straight at us, but she has a real good contrapposto or like an S-curve to her body. And I want to try to capture that. And of course, heighten the female proportions because that's, you know, when you have a female that has certain proportions, it's, you know, fun to exaggerate them if that's what you're going for. Uh, again, not really thinking too much about the head. But I'll start with the head and then move down the spine down to the hips, down to the feet. So that's the basic motion of that pose. Her shoulders are squared off. And 
when doing a pose where there is a lot of bending or motion in it, remember that the concept of like squash and stretch. One side of the pose will be squashed and it'll be bunched up. The flesh and fat will be gathered up and there'll be more like corners and curves. And then there'll be a flattened out side where the person is more stretched out and graceful looking. So on her, it's, you know, there's the, the rib cage as it meets the waist is going to be that sort of pinched or that squashed area. And the hip over here is going to be a little higher. I'm going to actually move this rib cage a little bit further to the right. Because I noticed this, uh, the arm on the left, her right arm, is sort of resting on his this hip. And it's sort of sticking out a little bit. Whereas this arm is sort of behind her a little bit and more straight down. So there, real, real basic gesture sketch. Uh, looks like her... The leg on her right is uh, coming in front of the one on the left. There we go. Okay, so since we're getting a little bit warmed up here, I'm going to now take this sketch and refine it a little bit more. I want to show the next step I have in the process. If there's any questions? Yeah, I have one from Praveen. He was asking, what should he do first, learn anatomy or gesture? Which comes first while learning art? Good question. What comes first? I would say gesture is way more important than anatomy when learning figure drawing. Uh, spend more time doing quick sketches. Don't worry about the anatomy or, pr or proportions until you're able to do good gesture drawings. I mean, you can learn them simultaneously. There's no reason to just learn one for just a year and then move on to anatomy, but uh, yeah, the, the, the gesture is the first step and it's definitely the most critical. And I sometimes still do things like, uh, you know, I indicate where the rib cage is, even if I can't see it on the finished product. Uh, but it does help me sort of visualize where things go, how things are connected. Shiny really wants you to draw Nisi. Yeah, yeah, she'll definitely be on my, she's on my list there. And right now I'm doing a real uh, simplified version of the human form. It's a bit of a mannequinized version, a slightly idealized. I don't really get involved in a lot of uh, anatomical reference points just yet. Just the overall sense. Like if you're doing a clay sculpture, this is just like the first rough pass over that. And it depends on your level of involvement in how much you want to do, how realistic you want to make it, but you can you know, get away doing a cartoon drawing that is this level where it's not uh, super refined and you just want to, if you just want to outline something like that, I think that's cool in caricature. But I like to do this anatomy that's, you know, underneath the clothing to um, to figure out my exaggeration level, uh, to figure out how much I want to push things. And uh, it'll have that much more believability when you see the finished result. 
even if it is totally covered by clothing, it'll have, you know, there'll be bumps where they're supposed to be bumps, like the kneecap, you know, distorts the dress and creates folds where the kneecap rests, so you need to know where that is. Um, where the, you know, the great trochanter is on the hips, where the iliac crest is, because there's like, again, subtle shadow and plane changes that happen there. Uh, the, the obliques intersecting with the abs has a bit of a depression right here on, uh, on the either side of the torso. So that comes from anatomical knowledge and working with the real human figure in a live situation and study of anatomy and muscles and bones. All right, and then I'll uh, add the dress here on top. That far foot is uh, hidden behind the dress, but the uh, front foot is peeking out just a little bit. And the head shape, the head proportion is always something that I wouldn't, well, maybe not always, but I usually do it separately. I figure that out individually, and then I'll just paste it onto the body at the right size. Uh, doing it here, though, can often, you know, drawing the two together can give you a better sense of how they relate and work with one another. But uh, this head shape and head size wouldn't be necessarily the final word on the subject. And just a few folds in the dress hanging down from the places where they'd be hanging off of the uh, tension points. That's the thing about clothing and folds is uh, the critical thing really is points of tension that where the fabric is uh, is all the folds will radiate out like radiate out from the elbow, from the shoulder, from the knee. Those were the, the the folds will sort of converge and radiate out from. Uh, if you keep that in mind, that will help out a lot too. But then there's other things. There's like passive folds where the clothing bunches up and wrinkles just because it's being compressed like on the bicep part of the arm or the back of the leg and it's sort of like they're I think they're called pipe folds they wrap around a cylindrical object so yeah so folding folds and drapery is definitely a whole other subject that could be studied that sounds like a whole other uh, stream yeah, a whole other stream <laughs> add that to the list yep uh, let's see I'll do Oprah later here's here we go Luke Make him a little smaller. There we go. Here's a good action pose where it's kind of funny. I think he's a, honestly a little stiff in here. It's just a publicity shot. It's not actually true motion, but I'll try to m heighten the motion and make it a little bit more uh, uh, exciting to draw. So the motion of the pose, he's got his back hunched over a bit, and then the weight is right under this uh, foot on the left. And this continues the line of the spine. This foot down here kind of trails off, off to the right. And the shoulder is kind of coming up close to his neck here. And I figure the, let's see, based on where he's holding the saber, his fists are going to be about right here. There's the upper fist and the lower fist. So this limb, it's, it's not short like this, but it's really foreshortened. He's like holding it, it's going backwards in space. So showing the cylindrical form receding in space is going to be really important for that particular limb. And then this elbow, I can see that beneath the uh, other arm, like so. And that's the basic gesture of this pose. And just like with the previous one, let's go ahead and do a little bit more refinement on this one to bring it out, make it more uh, fleshed out. So I have a question from Michael Watkins. He was wondering, is it better to start with the head and move down? That seems to be what you've been doing. 
that's personally my way. That's yeah. That's how I always work it out. As I start with the head, uh, and that's sort of like the anchor of the pose that determines everything else. Because the the body follows the head. Uh, the body's there to support the head. So I draw the head first. Yeah. So that's what I recommend you do. It's that's just good procedure. I think personally. And Tercio has a question. Do you recommend the drapery course in the Watts Atelier website? Yeah, do I recommend the drapery course on Watts? For sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a complicated subject, and it's it'll be hard for me to go over in a live stream just in a short amount of time because there's so many different types of folds and draperies that, uh, yeah, it, it, it bears its own, it definitely warrants its own um, subject, I think. It would be a valuable course to take, for sure. That's where I learned folds and draperies at Watts. Um, in lieu of that, though, there are um, there are books you can get on the subject. The only thing that kind of comes to mind is I think I think Andrew Loomis has some section on drapery in his uh, books. I can't remember which one. Maybe Creative Illustration, perhaps. I have, to, I have that book. I have to go check it out. So I'm just keeping things as real, like simple, like spheres, cylinders, basically spheres and cylinders, uh, because that's kind of what the body's made up of. It's well, the the torso is sort of a flattened sphere or a bean shape. That's a good way to think of it. Hopefully you can see how I'm exaggerating the pose here, making it more active, more energetic. Sometimes caricature bodies need big feet, sometimes they need small feet. Both can be funny, but it's good to alternate between the two and don't always do big feet for everybody, for instance, or don't always do small feet. I think because Luke is kind of gangly, Gook, Luke is uh, long and gangly and young in this picture, uh, big feet kind of works well, it makes him look more sort of awkward, like he might trip over his own feet. And doing things like hands in a gesture like this, just break them down to the just simple, simple shapes. Just try to get the overall uh, proportions right. You know, are they square? Are they round? Are they triangular in the, in the view that you're looking at? And uh, you can figure it out in the next phase. Uh, you know, worry about the anatomy there later. Okay. Um, I don't think I need to do the clothing on this one. It's uh, th he's sort of swimming in this shirt. It would kind of obscure all the figure underneath. But uh, you know, I'll move on to the next one. Oprah. So again, here's another example of a pose that doesn't have a lot of action in it, but I'm going to try to heighten the action and make it a little more exaggerated. And of course, have fun with the body proportions. So doing a caricature of a figure is a little trickier than doing a regular figure drawing because not only are you thinking about things like the, 
the gesture and the motion and heightening that, but also the proportions about changing that. But on the other hand, it is a little less stressful because you don't have to worry about exact proportions. That's one of the toughest things about realistic figure drawing is the body proportions and making sure it's you know all within a real narrow realistic range. With caricature, you know the pressure's off on that respect. So her head is turned to the right, but her body's turned to the left, which is kind of cool and fun. Nice dynamic contrast. And I think her weight is on her uh, rear foot, uh, which is the her right leg, basically the one that's on our left. So I'm gonna keep that in mind as I uh, draw her. It's kind of an interesting abstract shape I've created here, but yeah, this is the gesture of the pose here. And now let's add some limbs. Cool. So I think with her tiny feet and tiny hands works better. It sort of highlights the the uh, the volume of her body mass a little bit more. It makes uh, the distinction more obvious. Okay, so that's the general pose right here in a very simplified way. Now let's do a tracing on top of that. I have a question for you if you're ready for it. Yep. Daily Caricature asks, when just getting into caricature, do you suggest trying out different art styles or is it better to stick to one style? Well, if you're just getting into it, yeah, um, there's a lot of styles that might excite you. Abstract, simple, Mad Magazine style, John Cuneo, um, Oh, what's the Covarrubias, uh, Kruger, any, yeah, I mean, you should definitely explore as much as you can and just draw in the moment what you want to draw and maybe don't so consciously think and worry about your style because your style will naturally evolve uh, and it'll come whether you like it or not and you'll end up with a style that you didn't even try for just because of the artists who you admire, the artists you study with, um, the artists whose artwork you look at online. Uh, the materials you use, all that is going to be affected, is, is going to affect your style in ways that you can't even predict. So, um, yeah, definitely experiment in the beginning, but uh, 
eventually you will have to sort of figure out your style, but you don't have to worry about consciously doing that. It will just happen uh, based on that, based on like the things I said before. And it will evolve over time as well. Because um, I, I have a drawing and a coloring style and a painting style that I don't even realize I'm doing. I just do it. But a lot of you could probably tell, you know, hey, hey that's a Court Jones painting. I can tell by the way he, you know, painted the eyes or painted the nose. And it's not something I consciously think about at all. It's just, it's just how I draw. So same thing with painting. another one for you from Michael Watkins mm -hmm. he says it's hard to draw people with weight to them how do you do that without offending uh, well I'm doing it right now <laughs> and it may it may offend so you can't honestly let that be a worry you can't let it hold you back from doing what you think you need to do to be an honest and you know brutal caricature artist I mean, I mean you don't have to be brutal I mean that's just a I guess a style choice but um, I, mean, I don't. I don't personally set out to make fun of people, but I want to capture the truth of their being. I want to people to recognize the silhouette of this figure and know who it is based on just my drawing choices. Um, and it may not be perfectly obvious right away, but the more that I put in, it will hopefully be more obvious. Like the hair might help, but um, yeah. So. I mean, if you're in a live situation, that's a little bit different. If you're drawing people live at a party or an event. You know, you do have to answer to the people right in front of you. But again, I, you know, these people know, people know what they look like, um, and they spend all their life. Maybe they even joke about how they look themselves. They say, oh, I got to lose that fifty pounds that I've got. You know, I'm, you know, me personally, I could lose some weight. So, um, you know, some people might be more touchy about it than others. You got if if you're in a live situation, you got to kind of read the room. You got to read the person and sort of. Uh, you know, figure out if they're cool with it and they know what the caricature is and they're going to be okay with it, you can le usually let it rip, let it fly, and just not worry about it. And they'll enjoy it. I, I almost never have anyone complain or be angry at something I've drawn. And, and it's if, if they do complain, it's usually something that I would never have guessed would make them upset. Like, oh, my earlobes, you drew them wrong. You know, it's just something odd that they are have a hang-up about, and you're never going to be able to second-guess their hang-ups. So since you can't second guess their hangups, just draw what you want and because you're never going to please them all the time anyway. But if it's in a situation where it's for your portfolio, for illustration, there's really no need to hold back. You should just draw people exactly the way you want to without any fear of repercussions because no, they're not going to ever come after you. Very rarely. I think one caricature artist who uh, drew a certain female comedian with a large nose and put it on her, his Instagram, he tagged her in it. She sort of replied to him publicly and roasted him as well. But I think she, since she's a comedian, she kind of got the joke. She just was making a little bit of a publicity out of, you know, making fun out of the caricature artist who drew her mean. <laughs> so anyway, there, there's a hefty body there. And, uh, you know, I didn't go out of my way to make it ridiculous or anything, but it, it, it I think, captures her body type uh, while having fun but not going too extreme. Okay, who's next here? Oh, here's a good one. Weird Mick Jagger photo. A little uncomfortable to look at, actually. But, you know what? We're going to draw from it. <laughs> Jagger is uncomfortable to look at. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Keese asks, what about the stickers court? Yeah, you can, um, at the bottom of the chat window, there are... Uh, uh, you can do either do a super chat or stickers if you click on the, the money sign, I guess, if you want to add that to the stream or if you have a highlighted comment you want to make. Um, and you can choose your dollar amount level. I've never used it myself, yeah, so this is kind of an experiment, but uh, you'll be the first one if you do it. So, <laughs> But no pressure. Again, I'm not doing this to get paid. It's just, uh, like I said, it will help me be able to continue to do live streams in the future and get better equipment if I can make it more financially... Uh, viable to continue doing these. Okay, let's start with Sir Mick here. Again, head shape, kind of an odd angle off to the side, a little bit oblique. Down to the neck. 
angle of the shoulders. I sometimes find the angle of the shoulders before I do anything else, before I do the spine or the legs. Because it has a nice uh, intersection point where you can change the direction of the line. Sort of nice curvature to the torso. And he's got the contrapposto hip pose here. He's got a weird, weird body here. It's like very skinny, but also very barrel chested at the same time. Herman asks if you have ever dealt with any difficult clients, and I'm gonna say, have you ever dealt with difficult clients, difficult clients that you can talk about? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, every now and then, I mean, there's different definitions of what difficult means. I mean, there could be some that when you're working with them, they're very demanding or they didn't tell you initially what they wanted or they said that they wanted a funny caricature, but in the end, they really didn't. And then they end up micromanaging it to death. And then by the end of it, you just want to get done with them and uh, not, uh, you know, just, just make them happy and make them go away. Oh, looks like Keith's uh, donated a sticker. For, for 2.99 euros. Thanks, Keese. Appreciate that. Look at the little happy guy. He looks like an avocado or something. It's a pear. It's a pear. Okay. <laughs> nice pear. Um, then there's difficult, like, well, I mean, that that's the worst. And that's usually the most common is you get the, the uh, client who's very non-communicative or you maybe... Maybe you didn't manage their expectations enough. You know, you didn't, maybe weren't as upfront with them about what you wanted to do. Um, but in, usually it's just that they're hard to please. And they, they think that they want a caricature, but in the end, they if they're getting it, say, for their boss or a coworker, it's going to be a gift, then they get worried that that person will be offended. And that's usually more the case than anything else. People are usually more cool about caricatures of themselves than caricatures of uh, the people that they're buying it as a gift for someone. They're usually more strict in those instances so yeah and I don't know if Debbie was actually getting at this other incidence which was a celebrity caricature who was not the celebrity was not very pleased with it at all it was for an event it was a famous comedian um, I won't say names but uh, uh, the, he was gonna perform at a college or something and they wanted me to do caricature for uh, the publicity for the signs for the tickets for the posters and all that and, and I did, and I had a real fun time doing a really exaggerated caricature of him because he's a famous comedian and, you know, he's very well known for his appearance. And when he got on site and saw it, he was just furious and demanded everything with my image on it be taken down. He yelled at the people who organized it. He thought he was being ambushed or something. I don't know what was going through his mind, but, yeah, he was not happy about it at all. The client loved it, and the client was easy to work with, but the, the recipient, well, he wasn't even really the recipient, but he was the subject of it and did not like it. <laughs> But that honestly kind of makes me proud. I mean, it's a very fun day when you can really offend somebody like that. When it's really, I mean, they should be in on the joke because I mean, they're a comedian themselves. And, you know, they make fun of people. So why can't you, like, take a little of your own medicine? So it was a proud moment, actually, that I was able to offend someone with a sketch that I really believed in or a painting that I thought was really, really good and funny and really captured them. Now, if I had some reservations about it myself, if I thought... It was not a good sketch or I could have done it better and they didn't like it I would have like agreed and just a bit I would have been ashamed but I was very proud of that sketch so it didn't bother me and I got paid and that person has very distinct features that made it very easy to caricature yeah right yep yeah. so to segue into the next question from Ali Taiba how do you caricature a body or face that looks average with no distinct features um, well, then you, uh, I mean, you don't always have to exaggerate everyone and make everybody funny. So it can be one of those where it just doesn't come, come across as funny, and that's okay. Uh, but if you really want to add funny to it, just think about their, um, usually their age and uh, height, I don't know, and um, if they're male or female, that will sort of give you a starting ground to sort of go off of. Um, because an average female looks a little different from an average male, so there's some things in there you can play with. Uh, but you can also just arbitrarily exaggerate. You don't have to always exaggerate their body type according to specifically what they look like. 
Like one of my favorite things to draw is Donald Trump as like with a toddler proportions. And he doesn't have toddler proportions. He's a very tall, big man. Uh, but if you, I just, you know, I think it's funnier to draw him in a way that makes him look very infantile. So it's just an editorial statement I was making. So you can look at it that way too. Uh, but if you don't have any strong feelings about the person, about how to make them funnier looking, um, yeah, I mean, just it's a grab bag. You can just kind of do whatever you want with it, I guess. You can, you know, yeah, if you don't have any statement to make, then I guess you're in a little bit of trouble. So maybe just try to work harder to make a to create a statement about the person or to form an opinion. So people are trying to guess who the comedian is, and a few people have asked if it's Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. It is on my website, so. We will say no more. <laughs> So he's wearing the world's tiniest shorts, and it looks like he has the world's biggest bulge here, so I think that's, who knows if that's real, but, you know, that's something definitely to uh, include, you know, you can definitely make some fun of that in the caricature and highlight that area, because obviously he wanted to highlight that area, and it's part of his persona. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely the most uncomfortable sketch of the session. <laughs> looking at me all sassy like this. What are you thinking you're doing, Mick? So Albert Garcia asks, how often do clients ask you to draw them in a situation where you need to draw their bodies? For example, riding a bike. Um, it's not very often. I don't do, personally, I don't cater to the crowd that does a lot of um, body gag situations. I do more fine art caricature commissions for people, so I get around that. Uh, but I have done it. Like I've had uh, this one client who always has me draw his coworkers and family members. Comes to me every year or two with a new one, and I've drawn his these people on like you know motorcycles. I've drawn them fishing. I've drawn them doing other things. And it's just you know you find the right photo reference and you do it. You know as long as you have enough time. The tough thing is when you have like you're in a quick sketch situation and you have to do something complicated like a bicycle or a motorcycle and. It just really slows you down if you're trying to like sell them to the public and like move on to your next sketch. It's a little tricky. But yeah, anything you know, if you find the right photo reference, and it's photo reference has never been easier to find than it is these days with Google. You know, I feel bad for the illustrators of old who had to like clip things out of magazines whenever they saw them and keep them in a big filing cabinet and go search through them if they ever needed something particular. We've got it so easy now. We're so lucky. We can find anything we want instantly. Okay, done with Mr. Mick there. Uh, you know what, I really like this one of Jack Nicholson for some reason. It was a very cool, casual pose, very natural. So I think I want to draw that one next. And maybe focus a little bit more on his clothing and the folds and wrinkles than I did on the previous ones. So he's leaning back just a little bit, you know, puffing his chest out and stomach out a little bit. So that'll be some curvature to his uh, to his body pose there. If you have a hard time figuring out the gesture of the pose, just you know, take a guess. Try to see what's beneath the clothing. Look at where the lines are falling. Look at the angles, and you can usually find some kind of movement in a pose. your favorite medium tiki wolf is asking are oil paints my favorite yes i think generally as far as a finished medium to work in yeah i love having oil paintings and i love working in oil paints more than anything although i tend to work more in digital just for the convenience and the speed of it and you know oftentimes clients aren't paying a whole lot so uh it, it, I, I tend to go with the faster option just to make better use of my time uh, sometimes I can do certain things faster in oils than digitally, 
uh, like ch trying to work on a digital painting and give it a traditional look can sometimes be a lot of extra work. And that hop happens automatically when you know you're working in, in oils. So you don't have to work at getting a traditional look. So that's one thing where it's a little bit faster. You have another sticker. I have another sticker. Mary Kearney, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate that. Look at that one. A little super pair. <laughs> wonder if you can make your own stickers. You know, I looked into that. I didn't see a way to make your own stickers, but that would be yeah, fun. Yeah, we need to find out. Yeah. And not, again, not really doing a caricature of his face, but I wanted to get something in there. Uh, so let's, uh, yeah, I think I need to refine the body just a little bit more before hanging the clothes off of it. So I'll draw his man boobs. His moobs. And the, and the rib cage somewhere around there. And the belly. Down to the waist, gluteus muscles, and one leg is actually a little more, like the, the rear leg is a little more in front of the other one there. It looks like my camera went away. Oh yeah, where'd you go? I don't know. Do I have to reconnect it here? See if that brings it back. I can still see your screen though. Yeah, it's just yeah, the camera just went out though. Nobody wants to see you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll turn it off and back on. And we'll see if that helps. Yeah. As long as you can still hear me, that's the important part. Uh, Dodgy says, hey, Cord, a bit late to the stream in the UK. I'm thinking of uh, investing in an iPad as my Android tablet is pretty useless for drawing. Do you ever use an iPad? Yeah, I have an iPad Pro with a pencil. I almost never use it for sketching, though. Um, I mean, I've got my desktop set up here, so it's so convenient to just sit down at my desktop and draw. And I almost never draw on the go. I just, I don't really lead that kind of life. I don't go out and sketch in public, especially not since the pandemic. Uh... I mean, I have sketched in public before, but uh, yeah, that's the main benefit to working on an iPad, I guess, is just working remotely or, or whatever. Uh, but the, when I have experimented with it, it is cool. There are amazing, amazing apps that make your lines look really good, like Procreate, uh, Infinite Painter is another great app that a lot of people should look into. It has amazing drawing and uh, perspective tools in it. I'm going to actually uh, dim down this layer and draw on top of that when I draw his clothing. So let me draw that down. Let's see if my camera will come back to life here. Yes, sound is fine, but uh, no picture. Hmm. Well, okay, I'm just gonna turn off that input then so it doesn't block the screen. Yeah, so I guess you guys can't see me for the time being, but that's all right. Tiki Wolf asks, what's your favorite natural medium app? My favorite natural medium? Uh, like, I think we mentioned it just a minute ago, but yeah, oils. I love oil paints. But he says app. Oh, oh apps. Oh, sorry. Um, so natural medium apps. I'm not sure exactly what's meant by the question, because you can get the look of traditional medium 
in different painting programs. Um, so basically, yeah, you're asking about which app mimics that best. Um, the one I'm most familiar with is Photoshop, just because I've worked in it for years and years and I've customized it to my satisfaction. Um, Corel Painter has some tools right out of the box that don't need to be customized that do really good results as well. They have pretty decent watercolor tools and acrylic painting tools. And, you know, the iPad apps as well. Like, Debbie usually works in those and shows me what she's doing. But, uh, yeah, Procreate has, you were saying, has some good uh, mimics, right? Uh, Procreate's good. Adobe Fresco uh, is pretty nice. Oh, yeah, Fresco has an amazing watercolor brush engine, right? Yeah. And my other one that I like to use is Sketch Club. Sketch Club. Which is kind of fun. I don't know how well it mimics natural media, but it's fun to use. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. Oh, somebody mentions Artflow. Uh, isn't that for Android tablets? I think I've used that one. Artflow. Too. I don't know. I've never heard of that one. I think we used it for a gig once where we had to work on are you Android of, tablets. Are you thinking of Art Rage? No. Hmm. Yeah, I don't recognize that. Yeah, just focusing on the clothing now. Um, just I'm hanging the clothing off of the anatomy that's there. And I haven't done a whole lot regarding the folds and the draperies, but I plan to do just a little bit more. The hand here is essentially a little triangle shape with a thumb. <laughs> Somebody asked when I'm going to host a live stream. Yeah, we should hear from Debbie one of these days on a, oh. her own stream. Maybe if I can dress up in a costume. Okay, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, and wear a mask. Oh, don't be shy. I'm shy. Uh, Ali Taiba is asking, how much time studying anatomy is sufficient before going into caricature? <laughs> Ever? Probably never stop studying, right? Yeah, um, you never get good enough. You're, in art, there's no upper limit to how proficient you can get, honestly. So... Um, I would say, you know, it helps to have at least a year or two under your belt of traditional training. But, I mean, I started doing caricatures professionally before I got any formal art training at all. And it didn't hurt my caricatures, I don't think. I think I was a fine, live, quick sketch caricature artist for not having gone to art school or anything. I mean, I went to college and got an art degree, but it was, you know, they did not teach me how to draw or paint at that university. Um, and then I got my, that's why I got a job at SeaWorld, because I didn't really uh, have any qualifications to do... I mean, I wasn't really qualified to be a professional working artist after graduating college. It wasn't until I went to the atelier uh, that I got the skills I needed. So, uh, you know, to work into other areas, like painting and illustration. So, um, I mean, yeah, it depends on how much you put into it. You get out of it what you put in. Um, you know, you can study really hard for a year, or you can study anatomy and figure drawing very casually for 10 years and achieve the same amount of progress. So it depends on how ambitious and focused you are and how well you pick things up everyone can learns at different rates um, and it's not a bad thing it's just how some people work you know, I personally think I'm a pretty slow learner I went to the atelier for 10 years and I taught at the atelier at during that time for almost that entire time um, but I focused my teaching on what I knew best and I continued my studies on what I was weak in you know like learning anatomy and folds and drapery and long figure drawings and illustration and inking and gouache and landscape painting. I did all that while I was teaching my caricature and facial anatomy classes. So yeah, I mean, I if I had gone to, if I'd taken more classes, I would have been better sooner. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it took me a while, I think. I'm still, I still got a long way to go. I'm definitely not as good as I want to be, so it's just a matter of how much time you want to put into it and how many resources you can d devote to it, how much time per week you can practice 
And if you can get with a good teacher who will actually look over your shoulder and say, oh, hey, yeah, you're doing it wrong here. Let me show you how to do it. That was the great thing about good atelier training is that, you know, that uh, competent uh, teacher looking over your shoulder and showing you how to do it. Praveen's asking if I draw. Yes, you want to answer that? <laughs> Uh, yes, I do draw. Actually, Court and I met at a caricature convention many, many years ago. So the answer is yes. Yeah, she and I started in theme parks the same year, back in the mid-90s, and we've been drawing just as long. She actually drawing a little bit longer than me, professionally. <laughs> um, we didn't know each other at that time, uh, but yeah, we met through the caricature artist organization. And Debbie's my partner in business as well as life. Partner in crime. Okay, enough time spent on Mr. Jack here. Oh, got his sunglasses here. I don't want to forget those. Did you do these two yet? Nope, I'm working my way towards that group sketch. I love There we go. A little more clothing. It's a little more finished than the previous uh, studies I've been doing. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and start on the Reno drawing, I guess, because there's a whole group of people, and this may take me the rest of the time. <laughs> okay, so first, let me do a... I'm going to do a thumbnail sketch of all four of them together. And let's see. Let's go off the relative heights first. We've got... Uh, is that Deputy Jones? Was that his name? Is that Deputy that? Jones, Dang, yeah. Lieutenant, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dangle. Dangle. Yeah, a little shorter. Nisi and oh. I can't remember her character's name. Was it Trudy? No, Trudy was the yeah, no, short-haired girl. She was the one. She had like an um, Native American name, Birdsong, maybe. Is it Birdsong? I don't I'm gonna find. If you guys one. remember the Reno 911 characters' names, let me know. <laughs> So let's now, now I've got the head heights and their relative heights with each other, let's uh, figure out their body types. I like Dangle's body posture here. He's got his pelvis forward and his little shorty shorts, of course. So this one's most easy to figure out. Sort of puffing out his chest, leading from the pelvis. Hands on his uh, belt buckle. And uh, him on the left here is that, God, what was this character's name? Jones. Was, right? was it Jones? I'm going to look you think up for you in just a moment. Because it's my name. You think I'd remember that. But he's definitely like the broad-chested, you know, heavy, heavier person here, just very squared off. His legs widely spaced for his stance here. And note how I just reduce these things to just their simplest constituent forms when I'm doing this gesture drawing. I'm not really hung up on anything just yet. It's not uh, critical to get anything perfect yet. The main thing I'm focused on is just the masses and the posture and movement of each pose. You are correct. It's Deputy Jones. Deputy Jones. And I was also correct. It's Deputy... Deputy... Uh, wait... Birdsong was her actual name. Oh, okay. So, I'm not right on that one. The actress is Mary Birdsong. Oh, okay. What was her character name? What about Nisi's character's name? Let's see. Dangle is right. Oh, 
yeah, I heard Isaiah tell me Mr. Nash, best known. It's cutting off the names. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. Well, Nisi Nash, that's her real name anyway. I gotta find it. Um, she's got a great sort of uh, angled pose here too, uh, where the it's sort of the classic contrapposto. And she's got a really, really short uh, torso, which is kind of fun, I think. So her belt, I'm going to make her belt up a little bit high up here. She's crossing her arms. caricature her hips a little more than that. There we go. So I really want to play off everybody's opposite traits. I want to make people's differences even more uh, obvious and, because they're all stacked up next to each other here and it's real easy to gauge the differences when people are compared up against each other, specifically you know, in the same photo. So I, I love caricaturing people together for that reason. Okay, I finally have it. What? You ready? So, Deputy S. Jones, Deputy Renisha Williams. Was that her name in the show? Renisha Williams. Okay. And weird. the last one just disappeared again. She's got a real square head, this one. She's not quite as tall as Dangle, actually. Let me, uh... Lower her head a little bit. And let's actually shrink this whole layer down a little bit to give myself a little more room. Birdsong played Deputy Teresa Kimball. De Deputy Kimball, okay. Deputy Kimball. So now we have names. Kimball Jones. Cool. So she has cool angle to her shoulders here. And she's closer to uh, the pose that Dangle has in his, you know, hands on hips a little bit, puffing out the chest. And her weight-bearing foot is the one that's on the right, with the leg on the left, kicked out a little bit at the knee. There we go. So the gesture for all four of those. and. Um, yeah, let me flesh it out just a little bit more. I'm not going to necessarily do all their clothing, but I would like to bring it up to a slightly higher level of finish. Any um, interesting comments or questions or anything so far? Uh, yes, I was just waiting for the word. Uh, Maria Grasmick says she's taken uh, both of the caricature courses, one and two. Cool. And wanting to know when part three is coming. <laughs> part three? Yeah. Uh, is there a part three? I think I gave, I told you everything I know in the first two parts. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, there's no plan three planned right now, but I may be working on a new class on a different subject for Proco right now, so... And I'm sure if enough people request a part three, that could change. It could. If there was a part three, what kind of information would you like to see in it? Let me know. Yeah, let them, let them know. I need to know, people. I don't read your minds. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, well, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if you want to see some great group caricature compositions uh, by a master, look at some of David O'Keefe's artwork. He does a lot of uh, like group caricatures of people from like movies like The Godfather and Caddyshack and some other ones. And he has an amazing way of uh, making everybody's body and their silhouette and their body mass look very different from each other. Um, really, really funny stuff. David O'Keefe. What were you going to say, Debbie? I'm just asking, what is your Instagram handle again? Mine? Yeah. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm at, uh, at Court Jones Artist. I'm putting it in the comments. I, uh, this whole past week I worked on a couple uh, traditional illustrations actually, not caricatured at all. And it was a really, really fun assignment. Hopefully next uh, week, uh, next week's live stream I'll be able to share them with you. Um, I just got to get the word from the client if it's okay. But uh, yeah, there's some bodies in there and some action and uh, it's a pretty fun subject. It's kind of nice to do a traditional illustration for once. I haven't done many... Okay. Thomas Lennon, one of the funniest guys in Hollywood. Does a lot of screenwriting, too. Sorry, I have to mention this because it's a good point. People might not know. So when you were talking about Kruger, someone was asking if you were referring to Barbara Kruger. Barbara Kruger? No, I don't even know that name. Uh, I was referring to Sebastian Kruger, the master caricaturist. But I'm going to have to look up this Barbara Kruger now. I can do that right now. Is that the actress? There is an actress that's... There's Diane Kruger, who's the actress I know, but... Well, I made a dangle here a little short. <laughs> ah. Barbara Kruger is an American conceptual artist and collagist. Oh. Collagist. Started. Been around for a while, born in 45. Oh, okay. I'll have to look into her. You know, also for good figure instruction, just regular figure drawing uh, online, I I recommend them all the time, of course, because I'm a, not just because I'm affiliated with them, but Proco has an amazing course on figure drawing on uh, his Proco YouTube channel. Um, it's just figure drawing, I think, fundamentals, and it goes over starting with things like this, like the gesture and moving on to more complex forms and concepts, uh, and uh, there's good photo references if you're... Uh, if, if you buy the um, photo packs that he sells too, there's just tons and tons of photo reference of the figure in different poses. Uh, but it's a really great resource to use. Uh, again, it's on YouTube or there's premium versions of it on his site, but uh, you can start with the YouTube videos. So in the chat we have uh, a little discussion going on about caricatures, kind of. Um, Tiki Wolf actually said he worked drawing caricatures at Universal with Lee Harvin. Lee Harvin, okay. Do you know who that is? Or? Mm, no, I don't know if you yeah, know who that is. He said it was a while ago, so. Um, but someone else is asking if the way we do caricatures is similar, but you learned at Commons. Yeah, I'm a Commons trained person and Debbie was trained, Whoops. Debbie was trained by uh, Tom Richmond. And the way we learned is that you start with the eyes because the eyes were the most important thing. And if you didn't get the eyes, then you probably would not get a likeness. But Commons did it the opposite way, right? Yeah, yeah. Commons taught the outside in method where we start with the head shape because we think the head shape is most important in a caricature. Uh, so yeah, Debbie and I sort of have uh, different backgrounds in that. 
but we agree to disagree. <laughs> um, personally, I just I'm it fits in with my philosophy overall of drawing, like which is like when I'm drawing the figure here, I don't start with say the left elbow, I don't start with the detail, I start with the big shapes first, and then I whittle it down and get it more specific as time goes on. So um, that method of caricature drawing suits me really well because it fits in with my traditional training. But I think in a live setting too, sometimes it's good to mix it up mm -hmm. and maybe start from the opposite of where you usually start, just to kind of break you out of that monotony. Yeah, you, you can definitely develop habits, habitual traits in your caricatures if you draw the same way every single time. Um, and if you find yourself doing that, it's good to get out of habits by starting new ways of drawing. I, I, I kind of do a hybrid method now. I, I start still usually with the outside, like the cheek and jawline, but then I'll move like instantly and then into the eyes and nose and mouth, and then I'll finish off the rest of the head. But I, I do get the part of the head established first. I'm still more comfortable with that. So again, this is the stage that I would kind of call the mannequinization of the figure that I'm drawing on top of the gesture. It's uh, just uh, like a roboticized, simplified version of the human figure. What do you see Praveen's comment? Where can they follow you? Yeah, I did. I put it. Oh, I didn't see. I'll put it again. Yeah, if any of you guys want to follow Debbie on uh, her Instagram, it's Debbie Does Drawings. And those of you who know, know, and those of you who don't know what that refers to, that's fine. <laughs> Tercio asks if you're going to be a part of Proco 2.0. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, my courses will be on Proco 2.0, um, you know, my caricature course, and the new thing I'm doing for Stan will, yeah, it'll definitely be on there. And I'm already registered on there. I've got, it's just still in its beta testing, um, but I have access to it. What is Proco 2.0? Proco 2.0? I don't know if I can be properly explained. Oh. I, I don't know. Um, basically, it stands new website, and it's gonna, but it's gonna incorporate. Um, I mean, I'm not a good guy to explain it. I don't take my word for on everything. But there's gonna be a social media posting boards on it and stuff, uh, discussion forums, uh, and that's where all your classes are gonna be. Um, yeah, Stan talks about it in his uh, podcast every now and then, the Draftsman podcast. Um, I, I'm not sure of all the features it's gonna have, but it's coming soon, and it's exciting. She's the only one with a hat on, so let's draw her hat. Okay, now, um, that was her name on the left and the right, I can't remember. She's got like a bucket shaped head. I like that. Yeah, Mary knows what's up. <laughs> I've only been to Dallas once, and I did not 
draw or do anything. <laughs> but I only do drawings. Yeah. Nothing else. Tiki Wolf, he's the one who mentioned he worked at Universal drawing caricatures, was wanting to know if you have an agent. I do not have an agent, no. I mean, there are agencies that I get booked for for gigs, uh, but I don't have like an illustration agent that, say, represents me and gets me, you know, pitches me to companies to get me work. Um, I thought about that, but I just never really looked into it, really. I know some artists that have that, have that if that's what you mean. It might be worth it, I just, uh, again, haven't really looked into it. Uh, this is going to be my last drawing here, so I'm just about to wrap things up. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions that I didn't get to, let me know, because we'll be signing off pretty soon. Okay, so there's the finished drawing there without the uh, sketches underneath. Well, not finished, but enough, you know, to show the basics of their clothing and their postures. Did you draw each character on a different layer? I did not. They're all on the same layer. Uh, more for the sake of speed. I mean, I, I might have drawn them if I was just working alone on their own individual layers, but... Uh, yeah, that was just for this particular stream. I just did them all on one layer. That was a question from Bufato. Huh. Interesting screen name. Butch Curry is asking, any plans to do an oil painting live stream? Yes, I am working up towards it. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, I, I would love to have a better camera to record, like, say, the palette. Because right now my other webcam uh, is not very good at reproducing colors and stuff. But... Uh, yeah, so it's definitely something I plan to do, and I want to make sure that I do it right. Um, and I, I do have to do quite a bit of preparation for that, too. I need to make sure, you know, it's a caricature that's really refined. I've got everything figured out. You know, it's the drawing's really solid. And it's the same with any kind of uh, oil painting. I just want to make sure that the time I put into it is going to be worth it for the drawing. I don't want to, like, hate the drawing later. I'm very picky about which uh, drawings that get turned into oil paintings. Because it is such a, uh, um, I wouldn't say it's like super time consuming. I mean, I can do paintings fairly quickly, but again, it's it's more for just the purpose of having like a really really solid sketch to draw, and, and some other concerns too, like some technical, like things regarding the setup that I want to make sure are working um, before I commit to that, because it'll take a bit of prep. Anyway, yeah. So you're working on the faces now? Um, no, I'm actually, I think that's about it. We're at about an hour and a half where I usually like to end things. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I can't sign off with my face on the screen here, you guys, but uh, uh, I want to thank you all for joining and watching and all your great questions, and thanks for you guys who, uh, you know, used the, uh, the super chat. I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, if you have any other comments or questions you can think of that you, I didn't get to in the stream or you thought of later, just add them in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done that. 
and we will see you next week. Thanks again, guys.